So hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our fallow deer talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about the fallow deer, so let's introduce them. We currently have two groups here at Wildwood. The pair behind me belong to the main group, which is made up of females, adult females, with one youngster. Our second group consists of the black fallow deer, and they're currently sharing with Caramel the elk. Fallow deer are medium-sized deer, and they're probably one of the most distinctive animals in Britain. In the summertime, they have a beautiful spotted dappled coat and very, very distinctive antlers. Points at the bottom, large, flat area at the top, known as palmate because it's shaped like the palm of a hand. Like all deer, fallow deer are herbivores, strict plant eaters. They're mainly grazers, as you can see from the pair behind me, eating grass, but they'll also take things like leaves and shoots. Brilliant, excellent. As you can see, we have our Soe sheep ram sharing with the fallow deer. And he's a good illustration of the difference between horns and antlers. Horns are never ever lost. Antlers are grown and shed every single year. It takes nearly eight months to regrow a full set of antlers. That sounds a long time, but that means that this is the fastest known growing type of bone in the animal kingdom. Originally, they'll start off covered in a thin layer of skin and fur, which is known as velvet. By the time they are full grown, the blood supply will cut off underneath the skin, the skin itself will dry up, and in the autumn time it'll start breaking off in strips. Unfortunately, because there's dried blood underneath it, at that stage it looks absolutely horrific. It usually looks like the deer has been in a massive accident. But they're perfectly all right, there are no nerves or anything in the skin at that stage, so it doesn't hurt them. The reason why they grow the antlers, these are mainly for display and for fighting. I should point out that the deer that we have behind me will never ever grow antlers, and that's because they're girls. With almost all deer, only the males will grow antlers. The exception are the reindeer. Part of the reason for growing an antler is to show how healthy you are. This is an antler from a fairly young individual. To grow a bone like this, you have to be fit and healthy. They are a genuine demonstration of fitness and health. So if you saw a male with much larger antlers than yours, you probably wouldn't try and fight him. You'd walk away. Fighting is the other reason for having the antlers, but fighting in a way that's fairly safe. If you think of other animals that have horns, things like antelope, when they fight, they lock the horns together and they wrestle. But it's dangerous. If you slip, you could end up impaled on your opponent's horns. The antlers are different. The antlers will lock together. There's no danger of slipping, and you can actually wrestle and see who's the stronger. There's quite a lot of argument about whether or not fallow deer are native to Britain. If you look in a children's book of British animals from about 30 years ago, it will list three native deer, the red deer, the roe deer, the fallow deer. However, we now know that the modern fallow deer were introduced to Britain by the Normans, so after 1066. There were a couple of reasons for this. One was apparently William the Conqueror didn't like the taste of the native rape deer, and also felt that the fallow deer were more attractive. We know from archaeological evidence the Normans actually had deer parks around their castles, and that the deer from those areas were almost all young males. So rather than having a proper breeding group for food, they were selecting individuals that looked impressive. However, we now know that fallow deer were actually here during the Ice Age, and this is where the story gets a little bit complicated. When we think about the Ice Age, we just think ice 
cold snow. Not true. The Ice Age went through cycles of warm and cold. Believe it or not, we're currently in a warm phase of the Ice Age. In the cold phases, you'd have glaciers over much of northern England. The rest of England would be covered by tundra, very much like northern Russia today. But most importantly of all, because there was so much land ice, the sea level dropped. Britain was no longer an island. We were linked to Europe. Now, in theory, this means that animals could move quite freely from Europe into Britain. But in practice, it would only be those that were geared up for the cold weather. However, when it started to get warm, everything would change. You'd get the forest starting to spread back across Britain. It's a nicer climate, there's more food. And animals would start to move from Europe out into Britain. But at exactly the same time, the sea level would start to rise. And not everyone would get across the land bridge before it cut off and Britain became an island. In previous warm phases, we know that the red deer, the roe deer and the fallow deer were here in Britain. In the cold times, they'd head back further south. But in the last phase, the fallow deer didn't make it across the land bridge before the English Channel formed. So this is the complicated bit. Do we regard a fallow deer as a native deer, an introduced deer, or possibly the very first reintroduced animal in Britain, even though the Normans didn't know they were doing it? We hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about the fallow deer, and we hope you'll be able to visit us here at Wildwood very soon to see them in person. Thank you very much. <laughs>